Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here, and today we are doing a Q&A. Um, I'm going to answer all the questions that I got a few videos back, and um, I'm going to answer them while I'm showing you some recipes. So I'm not going to sit in front of you and answer the questions like I normally do. I hope that's okay with you. Um, I've always done Q&As where I sit down and kind of chit chat and talk. Um, I don't um, honestly have a lot of time to do that and sometimes I have mic issues so I am just um, trying it like this. So I'm going to show you a few meals that we've cooked, a few on the meal plan and kind of voice over some of the questions. So I've never seen it done like that. I thought it might be fun. Let me know in the comments if um, you enjoyed this or not, um, I can definitely do more. Thank you for all the questions that I got. I'm going to try and answer them as honest and real as I possibly could. There were some questions that um, I'm just not gonna answer on the channel here, uh, politics and all those sorts of things. Very intrusive uh, medical questions that is really none of some people's businesses. So um, I'm not gonna answer those, but uh, other than that, I, I'm an open book. So I'm going to answer all the questions. If um, I didn't answer your question, let me know in the comments down below. I think I got all of them. We got quite a few. So I'm pretty excited um, just to allow you to kind of get to know me a little bit better, if that makes sense. So um, I did get a comment that uh, I, it sounds like I'm whispering or you can't hear me. Uh, to be honest, I've always been soft-spoken. I'm in my 30s now. I don't think it's ever going to change. Um, so I do my best to speak up. I understand that a lot of people can't hear me. My own husband can't. Um, but it's just how I am. I normally don't like that. Um, I'm all about change and adapting. But um, I do my best. I do my best with what I have. So if you can't hear me, my captions are always on or just turn it up and I'm sure you can hear me there. But I am going to get right into this. We have quite a few meals here and yeah, like I said, welcome. If you are new here, my name is Tori. We would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Became part of our YouTube family. We make videos about everything, mainly about budgeting, family, and um, life here in Northern Colorado. Uh, I'm very much a creative person, so we do a lot of making of all the things on this channel. So like I said, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. I will have all of the recipes and measurements typed out in the description down below. I will go through, kind of tell you what we're making, and then I will answer the questions. So we are making salmon teriyaki tonight with some risotto and broccoli and that leads us to our first question what is my favorite youtube channel i'm gonna give you a top five because i have a bunch um i really love um elsa ray and baron i believe the whole channel is now um they're here in northern colorado they live in a scamp um they are amazing. I really, really love them, um, as well as Eamon and Beck. Uh, Beck, unfortunately, is going through a hard time right now. I will link all these channels down below, by the way, but um, she's pretty amazing. I love Farmhouse on Boone. She is um, phenomenal to me. She is goals that um, <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, I learned so much from her. Uh, Lisa over there on Farmhouse and Boone. And then um, who is my other one? Ellen Fisher. Ellen Fisher is a vegan mom who lives in Hawaii. She's amazing as well. I have so many YouTube friends on here um, that I haven't shouted out, but um, I've mentioned them. I've collaborated with them. Of course, those are some of my favorites as well, but um, I, I have a bunch. If you want one for a specific thing, travel, veganism, um, I don't know, family, anything, really just uh, let me know and I will put those in the comments down below. Uh, next question, full-time YouTube, would you ever do YouTube full-time? Um, I'm going to say no. I, I don't think I would. Um, the uncertainty with that um, is what scares me. I'm definitely a risk taker, but um, YouTube could say tomorrow that they are going to um, demonetize you. They um, they have a lot of power over you for um, a platform that kind of allows you to share your own life. Um, I don't 
like that. I like to be my own boss. Um, and they could say, we're not going to, we're not going to pay you tomorrow. And that is the scary thing for me. So no, I, I don't think I do YouTube full time. I try my best to, um, make it my full time, but it's, it's good. It's difficult. And I think it would, um, require a lot more of me um, when it comes to engagement and um, the hashtagging and doing all the things correctly to grow on this platform. But so no, I do not think I will. Um, next question. Are you always vegan? Uh, I, I wasn't sure what this meant. So I'm just going to go with my interpretation. The answer is no. Um, when I'm pregnant, I am not vegan. I eat dairy. Um, that is mainly because I've, I've actually like dove into this topic so many times and then I get so scared because some vegans are just, um, some people, I don't like to say vegan, some people just get so frustrated when a vegan goes back to eating um, dairy or meat. I don't think I would ever eat meat again. Um, it's the dairy for me. I do it during my pregnancies because I have hyperemesis the entire pregnancy. So it's, uh, it takes a lot out of me. That means you're sick the entire pregnancy. I did not gain any weight with my daughter. I lost 30 or 35 pounds. Um, the doctor said, what can you do to eat? Is there something that you can do? And um, it was a bagel and cream cheese. I could eat that. So I ate maybe one every other day for like my entire pregnancy. And, um, and I do that for my growing child. You would never, ever understand that unless you were growing a human inside of you. Um, and then, and maybe you have done that and you still don't understand it, but I mean, it's really to each their own. That is how I live my life. I don't um, force my veganism onto my family or my husband. If um, any of them came to me and said, I'd like to be a vegan too, that's that's great. I will do my best to help. But um, it's, it's, I guess, maybe a selfish way of living, but it's, it's kind of about me and um, how I feel. And that's why I don't, I mean, it's great to find other vegans. Um, you can connect with them. You can really, uh, really gain their perspective on things. But I just, I get frustrated when people have that judgment, like, oh my gosh, like I would never do that. Well, that's great. That's you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, next one, regrets, um, of leaving teaching. Yes, I, I have many. Um, but the good out, outweigh the bad, if that makes sense. Um, I'll be able to be home with my kids. The only thing I will miss about teaching is um, being with the students, teaching them art. There are a lot of issues in teaching today, and I, um, I simply just don't want to be a part of it anymore, if that makes sense. But with that being said, that kind of leads into the next question. What is a positive that is also a negative about you? Um, and I would say my emotions. I've always been an emotional person, but uh, postpartum has made it um, incredibly difficult. I wouldn't say crippling, um, but there are there are days where it it's hard for me. Um, and with teaching, it takes an emotional toll on you. I, um, I unfortunately deal with students who have adults in their life that have made such awful decisions um, that it, you know, it affects them. It affects their children, and sometimes some of these stories make me sick to my stomach, and I am just not emotionally available anymore um, for that portion of teaching, if that makes sense. Um, I know that's heavy, but I did want to say that. So that is a positive about me that I feel things deeply, but um, it does negatively affect my day to day. So I am actively trying to find a way to regulate those emotions. Um, I know it's not going to be easy, but hopefully it will come soon. 
Um, next question, where did you get married? Uh, we got married um, outside of Silverton, Colorado in a old abandoned mine town called Eureka um, at a Cabin in the Woods. It was phenomenal and beautiful. Um, if you are friends with me on Instagram or if you follow me on Instagram, I have some of my photos on there or um, Facebook too. You can find me there. Um, how did you meet your husband? I seem to get this question every Q and A, but I love answering it. Um, we met in art school. He was a photography major, and I was a, a printmaking major, and we just kind of um, saw each other a lot in the art halls. He was in art club. I. Uh, worked a lot in college. I had three jobs. I worked at Panera Bread, uh, a local bar, and I was the print shop um, monitor a couple of days a week. So I was really busy, but um, he was persistent and um, very kind, always was so kind. We thought, my friends and I thought he was some sort of alien. How could such a kind person be? I, I We couldn't figure it out, but um, he, he had no secrets. He was hiding nothing. He is just genuinely a kind person. Um, and here we are uh, 11, 12 years later. So pretty, pretty excited about that little story. So I always like to tell it. Uh, random one. What is your dream car? Um, I, I, <laughs> I wish I could say it's something fancy, but I, um, I really love forerunners and, um, the new Jeep with the third row Jeep Cherokee, I think, or something like that. I, those are my dream cars. Um, <laughs> I just, it's, I'm a simple person when it comes to cars. I, I've driven them all. Um, and I really do love Jeeps. They are my favorite. Um, Favorite childhood memory. I love this one. Um, my favorite childhood memory is the amount of things I did with family. I grew up in a small town with a huge family on each side. And every time I think back, I think of everything we did together. We cooked, cleaned, laughed, cried, uh, went outside. Uh, we just did everything together. I was always with a family member and it was beautiful. And, um, we are definitely working back to that. Um, hopefully, here in the future, we will be with our family once again um, back in Pennsylvania, but it's going to take some time. Next one, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I <laughs> I believe I'm an introvert, but um, if it comes to like my husband and I and we're out, um, I'm definitely more extroverted uh, with my, I guess, ability to strike up a conversation solely because I don't like awkward pauses and um, <laughs> I, I, I don't like lull in the conversation. So it may seem like I talk a lot if you've met me, but I'm definitely more introverted. Next one, um, natural birth again. Um, one, I'm not currently pregnant, but in the in the future, if we want to expand our family, I'd love to go for the natural route. Um, we were home very quickly. Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you that it, it doesn't hurt. It does. Um, but um, I'm not sure. I honestly, I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, I truly would love it, but I don't know if my body can handle that one again. Um, next one. How does your husband feel about you having a YouTube channel? To be honest, um, I don't really think he has like a, a yes or a no. My husband is not on social media. It's not something uh, that interests him. If anything, it's upsetting uh, for him to see some of the things that are posted, but I... Uh, yeah, he. I, I asked him and he said, you know, sometimes it's strange to see me talking when it's on a screen um, versus, you know, myself in real life. So, uh, no, I, I guess he doesn't really have a comment about it. He's very encouraging and very um, helpful when it comes to filming and all of that. How do you make it work being vegan with a non-vegan household? Um, I feel like my channel is all about that so um cooking wise it's pretty simple um 
I guess um, emotionally, like, yeah, it, it's hard for me to cook meat sometimes. My husband doesn't say, cook me meat <laughs> or anything. Um, he's capable of cooking his own meat. He's just a busy guy, so I try and help as much as I can. Um, I'm not, you know, jumping for joy every time I'm making, like, a steak, but um, I've definitely learn to kind of put it out of my mind, if that makes sense, while I'm cooking. But um, I do enjoy making vegan meals for my family and they enjoy it as well. So that is nice to have on the flip side. Um, the next one, the flaws of social media. I I definitely have one um, and that is you, it seems as if you need to fit in a bubble into a box. Um, and it bothers me. Examples include like um, being a vegan, so and having a family that eats meat. And then another simple one would be um, I really enjoy essential oils, and it seems as if if I enjoy essential oils, that means I can't like candles. So I find that people are kind of like I, I think I heard someone say this the other day. They're just kind of confined with their audience they're afraid to post every aspect of their life and I truly try and keep it real like I always say on this channel but I I fear that if I were to show me eating a Burger King burger like someone would be like oh my goodness that's awful and um I don't know I just I think humans are much more complex than that and um maybe there truly are people out there that um kind of stick to it maybe they do stay in their box but I am just all over the place with my interests and beliefs to be honest with you that that is why um, politics are hard for me I don't really fit into um a political party to be honest with you um I'm sure you can figure out where I lean towards but I I don't know um social media social media is um a finicky finicky beast um and half the time you sit there and you wonder if you actually want to be a part of it but um so many positive things come from it as well another thing that I find hard is um the money aspect you know and um it kind of leads into the next question I did get asked how much I make on YouTube I'm gonna be honest with you it's not a lot under two hundred dollars last month um and that was a good month um and maybe I will grow but there are many ways to make money on YouTube besides those ads. If you aren't watching the ads and you want to help, uh, watch those ads. But, um, you know, there. I, I mean, I have brands that reach out to me and um, they want to give me a product. They don't want to pay me to make a dedicated video, but they want to, you know, share a part of the sales commission. So say I get a product and then I offer it to my audience and I offer it with a percentage off, I would get some of that commission. But it just makes me uncomfortable, I guess, taking money from real people. I'm a budget channel. I don't expect people to spend money and then me make a percentage of that money. It's a really like hard pill for me to swallow. I get that this is people's livelihood. That's how they make money, but it makes me uncomfortable to, I guess, not, I not perform a service. Um, I believe in getting paid for a service and with YouTube, I thought it was such a nice platform because, you know, you, create this content and then people watch it for free and that's how you get paid. So, I mean, it's not you're offering information and um, someone is watching it and you still are getting paid, if that makes sense. Um, paid pennies, just to let you know. But I mean, I I don't know. It's a finicky thing. I think it all kind of goes together um, with making this my full-time job. I you know, if it if it could work, it could work. Um, but it would allow me to stay home with my kids, um, which is what we're doing. But um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you next year is not going to be a struggle. Um, it's, it's a privilege to stay home with your kids. I'm so, so honored that I get to do it. I, I get frustrated too with um, my kids when they're at home with me, but I, I think it will be better for my mental health and um, everything that goes along with it. The commute I've had, I've stated before is long. Um, 
with the gas prices right now, it's, I keep seeing everywhere, like, be thankful you can pay for the gas. I'm, I'm thankful, but I mean, I, we can barely pay for it. So it's just, I don't know. There's a lot on my mind when it comes to money and social media. And I hope that kind of gave you a glimpse into how I'm feeling about it. Um, next question. How is Delilah? Uh, Delilah is my daughter. If you didn't know, she is doing better. Um, her autoimmune disease, Guillain-Barre, affected her at age one. So a lot of the things that were taken away from her, her ability to walk, crawl, sit up, eat, hear, um, all of those things came back relatively quickly, um, so they say, but it was scary and um, it's something that still sticks with me. It's definitely, um, you know, in my bones. It's it's part of me now. So I, you will see me kind of conquering that. But um, yeah, it's been a challenge, but she is doing phenomenal right now. We are very, very happy with her progress. The last question, how do you balance it all? Um, I'm flattered that it appears that I am balancing this all. Um, I try and remain positive. I really do. And that seems to help me the most. Alrighty, everyone, that is going to do it. I hope you learned a little bit about me, maybe some things that you didn't know. I hope this uh, is a way that we can connect a little bit more. Like I said, if I didn't answer any of your questions in the comments down below, or maybe you have some new ones, please drop them in the comments and I will answer them there. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.